First Chronicles, chapter number six. Now we're up to the sons of Levi, the third son of Leah, Genesis 29 and 34. And the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Now those are the three divisions of the Levites. Each of them has their own duties when it comes to their tabernacle. Now all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. And the sons of Kohath, Amran, Ithar, Hebron, and Aziel. And the children of Amram, Aaron, and Moses, and Miriam. And Exodus 6.20 tells us that their mother is Jochebed. So there's Moses and his family. They're all one, brothers and sisters, Amram and Jochebed. The sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, they burn up, offering strange fire. Eliezer and Ithamar. Now here's the line of the priest to the captivity. Eliezer begat Phinehas. And you, you find these names. And Abishua. And Abishua begat Buckeye. And Buckeye begat Uzai. Uzai begat Zerariah. And Zerariah begat Marioth. Marioth begat Amariah, and Amariah begat Ahitub, and Ahitub begat Zadok. That is the priest with Abiathar in David's reign. And Zadok begat Ahimenaz, and Ahimenaz begat Azariah. Azariah begat Jonathan, or Jonathan. And Jonathan begat Azariah, parentheses, portent. He is that exec executed the priest's office in the temple that Solomon built in Jerusalem. So when that when Solomon builds that temple, Azariah is the first high priest to go into that temple and do the duties thereof. Zadok, he is the priest that when David brought the ark amongst the curtains. In verse 11, and Azariah begat Ammoniah. And Ammoniah begat a high tub. Now, some of these names repeat. That's another problem with the Bible when people have with the name. They're repeated names. They're named after their grandfathers. And a high tub begat Zadok, and Zadok begat Shalom. Shalom begat Helkiah, and Helkiah begat Azariah. And Azariah begat Syriah, and Syriah begat Jesozak. And Jesozak went into captivity. When the Lord carried away Judah and Jerusalem by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. So when Babylon comes and takes away Judah and carries them off, Jehozak is the last high priest before the temple is destroyed. Azariah verse 10 is the first one to minister in that temple. And look, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 verses, and then it's the last high priest to be serving in that temple. And we close at that verse. Now the sons of Levi, again, mentioned twice, verily, verily. Listen, to the, to the nation of Israel, the 11 tribes, that one tribe, Levi, they didn't do what they were supposed to do. Now let's say you had a guy in Judah, the one that the Lord came out of. Let's say he didn't plant vineyards and he didn't do nothing. Okay. He was lazy. He violated the law in that step. But if Levites did not do their job, that tabernacle, that temple, and there would be times we've read through Kings that the house, the temple has become in disrepair. It has been breaches. Even one time the king said, listen, collect the money, fix the temple. And they collected the Monday money, but they did not fix the temple. And the doors were closed. And then at one time they found the book of the law that was hidden inside. And there were other junk and items put in that temple that did not belong in that temple. Verse 17, these be the names of the sons of Gershon. Now this is in one of the tribes, one of the groups of Levi. Libai, Libani and Shimri. The sons of Kohath. Now Kohath's lot was, he was to bear the ark on his shoulders. He was to carry the furniture. He was to carry that brazen altar. It was covered. But his job was to bear until David put that ark 
settled in Jerusalem. When Solomon finally put that ark in that temple and it rested, that was Kohath's job. Where Amram, where we know that's Moses' family, is our Hebron and Azeel. The sons of Merari, Mahulai, and Mushai. These are the families of the Levites according to their fathers. Of Gershon, the other son of Levi. Of Gershon, Libni his son, Jahath his son, Zim, Zimna his son, Jaha, Jaha his son, Ido his son, Zerah his son, Jedari his son, the sons of Kohath. Again, these are the ones that carried Aminadab his son, Korah his son. Oh, Korah. That's the one I believe that caused trouble. Ather his son, Elkinah his son, Ebeshath his son, Asher his son, Tehath his son, Uriah Uro, his son, Uzziah his son, Shul his son, and the sons of Elkinah, Amasiah and Anaha. As for Elkinah, uh oh, the sons of Elkinah, Zophai the son of Nahath his son, Elib his son, Jehoram his son, Elkinah his son, and the sons of Samuel. Well, let's go over to 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1. 1 Samuel 1 1. Eli at this time is a priest, is not doing his job. His sons are wicked. There, there, there is sex going on at the at the at the at the tabernacle. There's just foul play with the offerings. And Eli does nothing to stop it. So God calls another man. He sends a prophet to Eli and says, You're done. But God calls another man. And come to find out that that man is of Levi, verse 1, 1 Samuel 1. Now there was a certain man of Ramoth Zophah, that's where he comes from, in Mount Ephraim, that's the tribe of Ephraim. His name was Elkinah, the son of Joham, Ham, the son of Elo, the son of Jotha, Joha, the son of Zoph, and Ephraim Hundite. Now, let's chat over the chapter 1, verse 20. His wife was Hannah. Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived that she bare her son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. El, Jehovah, Sam, ask, ask of the Lord. Remember chapter 1, verse 1, as we come back over chapter 6, verse 26. As for Elkinah, the son of Elkinah, Zophiah, his son, Nahath, his son, Elbab, his son, just as 1 Samuel 1, 1, Jehoram, his son, Elkinah, his son, and the sons of Samuel. That El Elkinah, verse 27, that's the man we open up in 1 Samuel 1, 1. The father of Samuel. There he is. So Samuel is of the Levites. He is of Kohath. He's not of he's not of Aaron. Um Eli I couldn't think of his name. Eli just so wasted the priesthood. God calls another man from another particular of Levi. And settles him in. And that Ephata that we see that he lived in, well, take your Bibles to First Chronicles chapter four, verse four. He was Ephrathite, he was an Ephrathite. First Chronicles four four. And Penu, the father of Geter, and Ezer, the father of Husha, these are the sons of Hur, the firstborn of Ephrata, the father of Bethlehem. Ephrata is an old name for Bethlehem. And guess where God calls the next priest to replace Eli? He calls a man that is in Bethlehem in Judah. So that's interesting. I learned that today. 
In verse 28, the sons of Samuel, and Samuel had sons, and they didn't do right either. And I didn't know this one until I looked at the commentators. I would never even give it a thought. But there's a problem here. The sons of Samuel, the firstborn Vashni, and Abiah. 1 Samuel 8, 1. We'll look at the problem. It's simple enough. 1 Samuel 8, 1. It came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons rank judges over Israel. Now the name of the firstborn was Joel, and the name of the second Abiah. They were judges in Bathsheba. Well, one says Joel, and the other one says Bathsheba. Well, they're the same guy, they just have different names. Not so hard. You mean you never had you never met somebody named Richard and they had you call him Dick? You know I had a I had a Uncle Robert, but we always called him Bobby. Uh Francis is usually called Frank. There's nothing wrong. I mean, I wouldn't even think that would give time, but that's a problem with the commentators that bash and I enjoy. It's the same guy, just a different name. The sons of Merari, Mathali, Ibni his son, Shimei his son, Uzzah his son. Shimei his son, Hagarith his son, Athath his son. Okay. So we read that whole line to read about one man, Samuel. Look at 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 20, 22, all the way down to 30. The line of Samuel. That when God made him a priest... And I may have been in error about this before, and I apologize. Samuel is of the priest. There he is. Notice how we did not read Eli. And these, verse 31, these are the they whom David, so we're in the time of David now, set over the service of song. The one that writes the Psalms. He puts priests in their class for songs and worship of God. And I guarantee you, David would not allow this nonsense that's being played today. In the house of the Lord. Now remember, his house of the Lord was intense. It wasn't the, the temple that Solomon built yet. After the ark had rest. That was 1 Chronicles 16.1. He brought the ark into the curtains in Jerusalem. And from that point forward, he says, listen. I have a staff now of Levites. What's, your, what's our job? You're going to sing to the Lord. You're a professional, and you're going to do it right for the Lord. You ain't just going to step up on the altar and just sing because you're being told to sing. You worked on it. You practiced it. You knew what you were doing. You made sure that you made it right for God. And they ministered, ministered, taking care of. Before the dwelling place of the tabernacle of the congregation, which singing unto Solomon had built the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, and they waited on their office according to their order. Now that's interesting. You go, you sit down somewhere, and a person comes up to you and says, May I take your order? And you call them a waiter or a waitress. Isn't that interesting there? Waited and their order ministered. You want to see something weird in the Bible? And I can't put it together. But let's take our Bibles to Acts chapter 6 verse 2 with what we just read. Acts 6 2. And if you want to be a deacon in a church, though not called deacons in Acts chapter 6, but this is the job. Of the deacons and the pastor. And it says in Acts 6 2, then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto him and said, It is not reason that we leave the word of God. That's the preacher. We got to study the word of God. We got to make sure we get what we're going to preach and teach and serve tables. Well, that's interesting. 
when and the, the issue here verse one it, there are uh widows are not being taken care of properly dispersing food or needs wherever it is and that's not the pastor's job That is to the deacons. The deacons are supposed to find out in the church the needs of the people in the church. And it's the deacon's job to take care of the people, not the people serving the deacons. So when we come back over here in Chronicles verse chapter 6, here are a group of people called by David. They are not of the sons of Aaron. Aaron does not have time to get into a song leading. Aaron does not have the time to make sure that the instruments are there. Aaron does not have time that the, the trumpet broke, we need to buy another trumpet. That is, and I'm talking about Aaron, I'm talking about his sons, the high priest. That is not Aaron's job. Aaron's job is to make sure, all right, do we have... The pigeon. Do we have the lamb? Do we have the morning offering for tomorrow morning? Is the evening offering almost ready? Because it's almost time. You better make sure you do it. Aaron's job, make sure, okay, at the day of atonement, everything has to be right. I got to do this right. And there are offices under Aaron, and I mean Aaron and his sons, the people who have to wait and do the order and minister. For the people. And the office of deacon has come into the modern church today. Is You see my little name tag? I'm the deacon. And we have more power than the, and many churches, we have more power than the pastor. And that is anti-biblical 100%. Those people are supposed to be helpers of the people if you want to be a deacon. And the deacon is according to how many people are in your church. If you got so many people that you know the deacons can't help them, you got to get another deacon to help the people. If you got too many deacons and not enough people, you got to lose some deacons. They are to help the preacher, they are to help the pastor, not eliminate him or overpower him. Else, you would have um, why is it every time I think of the word, the word always goes out of my head. Nicodemian, Nicol yeah, Nicolaitan. Look at us. Look at those people. Look how great we are. Ooh, them. I'm not I'm glad I'm not as this man, Nick Torchner, you know, all that. So there is an office. And there's the word office. The priest's office, verse 10. That verse 10, the office, that's the high priest. And David has sent men under him to minister. Verse 32. And these are they that waited. Now here they are. Here's the ones that David called. With their children. So when you go over to Timothy and God, to, to speaking through Paul, and says, listen, this office of a bishop, this office of a deacon, you got to make sure your children and your family are doing right. Why? And they that waited with their children. Of the sons of Kohath, now this is Kohath all the way down to 38. He meant a singer, the son of Joel, the son of Shimeel, the son of Elkanah, the son of Jehoram, the son of Eli, the son of Torah, the son of Ziph, the son of Elkanah, the son of May have the son of Amishai. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> that almost looks like it goes right along with the family of Samuel. Elkanah, the son of. I gotta find the names here. Where is it? Maybe not. I thought it was. To where isn't there? Toha. No, I guess not. I mean, it sounded like the same. Nope. The son of Torah, the son of Zeph, the son of Elkanah, the son of Mahath, the son of Amasai, the son of Elkanah, the son of Joel, the son of Azariah, the son of Zephaniah. That sounds awfully familiar to me. The son of Tahath, the son of Aser, the son of Ebiasif, the son of Korah. The son of Izar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. Now take what that was 
in verse 18. And we saw it backwards. And is that not Elkina? Johan. Is it Johan? Ela. But then there's a, a Toa. Not Nahab. You see what I mean? There's so many same names that it can mess you up. But that's the Kohath side of David's order. Now Gershom, verses 39 to 43. His brother Asaph, who stood on his right hand, even Asaph, the son of Berechiah, the son of Shimea. Asaph is a man that you find his name awfully mentioned in the side footnotes of the Psalms. A song for Asaph. He was the head. The son of Michael, the son of Bachelor, the son of Melchiah, the son of, <coughs> excuse me, Ethani, the son of Zimra, the son of Shimei, the son of Zahab, the son of Gershom, the son of Le Levi. That's a reverse of Gen uh, chapter 6, verses 17 and 20. So that's three times that the list of these children of Gershom, Kohath, and Merari have been mentioned in this one chapter. It's got to be important. This is much as important as more important than the birth of Jesus Christ only mentioned in the book in the Gospel of Luke. In Matthew, he's at least under two years old. He, he's older than his birth. That doesn't sound right. In Matthew, he's already been born. He's a young child, it says in Matthew 2. Luke is the only place that mentions his birth. It's not mentioned in Mark. It's not mentioned in John. And we're seeing the families of, of the Gershom, Kohath, Merari three times. Verse 44, the, the sons of Merari and their brethren, the sons of Merari, stood on the left hand. Ethan, the son of Cushai, the son of Abadai, the son of Moloch, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Amaziah, the son of Hezekiah, the son of Amaziah, the son of Benai, the son of Shimar, the son of Mahai, the son of Mushai, the son of Merai, the son of Levi. Chapter 6, verses 16 and 19. Now we're talking about three men. He men, Asif, Asif, and Marara. Uh, no, um, Ethan. And yet we're looking at their genealogy to Levi. I am named by God by not who I am, but what I am by Jesus Christ. I'm a child of God and got the genealogy of Jesus Christ in order to be saved. Their brethren also Levites were appointed unto all manner of service. All right, they may not have done the job of the high priest, but someone had to bring the oil in. Somebody had to keep track of of the candle somebody had to keep track of you know make sure that the utensils are clean to make sure the place is up key make sure that that tear over there was taken care of somebody was supposed to be taking care of that breach and their brethren also levites remember all priests are levites but not all levites are priests yet they still serve at the tabernacle were appointed unto the manner of service of the tabernacle of the house of god and Lord willing, we're going to pick up the fourth group of people under Levi next time. Aaron, the high priest. So listen, it, it's not just, you know, running to the brazen altar. Okay, offer this, take your blood, you know, on your finger and slash it towards the Lord seven times. Man, there's all the kinds of Levites running around and doing work. One guy's probably, okay, your name is that. Okay, make sure I record that you're here. What are you here for? Okay, this is what you need. Do you have what you need? And over here, we need more water over here for the labor. Okay, I'll get that. Run out of wood over here at the brazen altar. Okay. 
And John the Baptist's father would go into the incense altar and offer that incense at that time while the people were outside waiting for him to come out in the time of prayer. Everybody had a job. It's a busy thing that was going on with the Levites. It's an important job because without the Levites, the nation of Israel, God would, would not be pleased with them. David used the, the Levites all the time. Solomon used it until he you know, got married to all his wives and going after other gods. And there were times in great revivals of the kings that we read, like Hezekiah, that the priests would come in. And they would tell the king, they would advise the king, this is what we need to do, this has to go. In order for that nation, that king, to be right with God, these are the men that would have to do their job. The king, we had one king, Uzziah, go into the, into the holy place, and God struck him with leprosy. We had a friend of David, a... Uh, uh, Erez, and they carried the ark of the ark of the Lord wrong. They put it on the cart. Somebody should have stepped up to David, tapped him on the shoulder, and say, "That's not that's not the job. We're the Kohites. We're the Kohites. That's our job to carry that, David." No one spoke up and told David, and it, the ark stumbled, and and Josiah touched that ark, and poof, he's dead. There was an error because none of the Levites did what they were supposed to do. And then David later on, he said, you know what? We got to bring in this in. We got to do it right. He calls on the scribes. He calls on the Levites. He said, what do we need to do to do this right? And then David gets in there. He gets to the priest. He gets to the trumpets. And they, they anoint themselves. And then they bring that ark in like it's supposed to be brought in. And we see that under Zadok. So these have great importance in God and the people. 